We begin our report with truth and consequences in two New York courtrooms this week. The trials begin for Donald Trump and FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried, both of whom face charges. They committed fraud, building empires out of hyperbole and deceit. We start with CBS News chief elections and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Former President Donald Trump sat stone faced in court this morning. The fate of his New York properties, including Trump Tower and his family business, at stake. New York Attorney General Letitia James, who brought the $250 million fraud lawsuit against Trump and his adult children, sat just feet away from the former president and his son Eric. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how much money you think you may have, no one is above the law. Trump used the occasion to attack James and the judge. We have a racist attorney general who's a horror show who ran on the basis that she was going to get Trump before she even knew anything about me. Trump is accused of misrepresenting his net worth by over three and a half billion dollars, inflating his assets to secure better loan terms. He allegedly claimed his Trump Tower penthouse was nearly three times its size and valued Mar-a-Lago as high as $739 million, nearly 10 times its worth, according to James's office. Attorney Kevin Wallace told the judge they were lying year after year after year. Trump's former fixer Michael Cohen said in a deposition played in court that he and former Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg were tasked with inflating assets to obtain the number that Trump wanted. Let's say it said he was worth $6 billion. Well, he wanted to be higher on the Forbes list. And he then said, I'm actually not worth $6 billion. I'm worth seven. In fact, I think it's actually now worth eight. Trump attorney Chris Kyes called Cohen a serial liar and said everyone has a different opinion as to valuation. It's a sham. The former president Just called the trial rigged and a witch hunt days after the judge ruled he had committed fraud. What we have here is an attempt to hurt me in an election. And Robert Costa joins me now from outside the courthouse in New York City. Bob, help us understand why there is no jury in this case, why it's just before a judge, why that's the case, and how that will affect the proceedings uh, in an eventual ruling. John, always great to be with you. This is an unusual legal circumstance for former President Donald Trump. He's not facing a jury trial. Instead, it's a civil lawsuit trial, and he's being sued by the Attorney General of New York. But the Attorney General is making statements through her, her, her lawyers uh, today. The, the, that office of the Attorney General has a case against Trump that he defrauded people for years by making these valuations of his company. But ultimately, it's the judge in this case who is going to have final say. And in part, this is because the judge said today in the courtroom, and I was sitting just steps away when he said it, the Trump lawyers didn't request a jury trial in this civil circumstance. And so right now, it's all in the hands of this judge. Of course, Trump could appeal down the line should it not go his way. But right now, this judge has a very powerful grip over Trump's future in terms of his businesses and his brand. So it could have been a jury trial if they had asked for one. This is all happening in the middle of primary race. Of course, you reported last week about Republican donors looking outside of the current field. Um, what, what's, the, what's the temperature of that nervousness right now of those donors looking outside of the current field? Uh, and are they still looking at the governor of Virginia? Uh, there's a sense among many of the top donors in the country, some privately to me, some publicly went on the record, that something needs to happen if they don't support Trump as the nominee. They want to see an alternative emerge. Some of them have strong support or at least hopeful support for people like Nikki Haley, the former ambassador, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. But there's a fear in the anti-Trump coalition the, among traditional Republicans in particular that if nothing starts to happen by November, then maybe Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin, should he get a bounce by the off-year elections in Virginia, could be considered to enter the race. Of course, this would be a slapdash scheme. It takes a lot of effort to get on the ballot in so many of these heavy uh, uh, delegate states that you really need to win or do well in to compete against Trump down the line. So a lot's in the air, but there's a lot of fear. I mean, former uh, retired General John Kelly just told CNN that Trump is someone who could be a real danger to the republic, and he said, God help us. Uh, just a moment ago, that was published, and that's really the sense I, I find from many traditional Republicans. The Haley and DeSantis campaigns are, uh, they've been invited to pitch some of these um, uh, wealthy donors to a, Republic, to a network of, of Republican mega donors next week. How does something, let's imagine one of them did well, 
Uh, first of all, what does doing well look like in that context, if it's possible to know? And, and secondly, let's say one of them does well. What's the, what's the door prize? What do they get and how helpful might that be? Ultimately, the, the prize is going to be survival in the race. You need money to survive. You need money to compete, money to have a staff, and consolidation. There's got to be a push for consolidation in the race. That's the echo and the refrain I hear from so many of the major donors in this country and the veteran strategists who don't like Trump, that until this race consolidates among somebody in it, who's currently running, then nothing happens against Trump because the anti-Trump vote is split. Senator Mitt Romney and I had a good interview a few weeks ago, and he said, look, whether it's Yunkin or anybody else, you can get in, but if the field is big, that whole vote is still split. And so th there's a sense of paralysis among the anti-Trump Republicans about what can be done. And at this point, there's also a sense of re resignation among a lot of them, John, that nothing can be done. Mm -hmm. All right, Robert Costa outside the Manhattan courthouse delivering it. Thanks, Bob.